we got to get right now, right here, we got to get like the full story of where Casey Veggies came from, yeah. the come up, the whole story. Because you got a very inter- interesting uh, vantage point yeah. on a lot of important shit that has happened uh, in this wild ass LA rap scene. Yeah. So, no, where exactly did you grow up? I grew up, uh, I, I was born in LA, grew up like in Inglewood, California. Okay. So, yeah, I went to school in Inglewood, went to Crenshaw High School, ninth grade, and then I graduated from Inglewood High. Uh-huh. After that, I was playing basketball all through uh, high school. Um, I met Tyler, the creator, eighth grade, going into uh, ninth grade. We met, we, we started doing music together. So, this is pre Odd Future? Yeah, this Before is like the name? Pre Odd Future. Like, the, the name came at like, 13 years old, we had, mm-hmm. a, um, me and the homies, you know, we started like a brand called Peas and Carrots International. Mm-hmm. And then from there, um, you know, we all came up with the names, you know, it just went with the brands. The vegetables is good for the mind, body, and soul. It's but was this pre, pre-rapping? pre This is like, nah. Or did it all kind of come together? Like, like when I started rapping, my first name was Custom. And then I right, switched right. it up. At, after that, I'm like, nah, that's not it. I got reminded of that by Nardwar when I was watching yeah. the interview yesterday. So I was just like, you know, the Peas and Carrots brand, I'm like, you know what? They was like... How about we run, run with the veggies, you know, Casey Veggies. I'm like, you know what? That sound kind of that sound kind of dope. Mm-hmm. And I just, I was 13. I'm just like, yo, let's let's run with it. 13. And then I started doing music. Um, I went to my first year at Crenshaw High. I recorded my first mixtape, uh, Customized Grady Volume One. Uh, we had Tyler on it. Uh, we was doing music together. We that's when he was first like starting the whole Our Future concept. Mm-hmm. It was like a magazine. Our future At magazine. At first, it was supposed to be a magazine. Yeah, like he first, his first idea for it was like a magazine. That's crazy. And then from there, he turned it into like a rap group. And then, I mean, stuff started going crazy. I dropped that first tape. We was like more on MySpace with it, uh-huh. just promoting on MySpace, like word of mouth through the city. I already knew a lot of people in LA. I was like the young dude that knew a lot of the older cats and stuff like that. We had a clique called Priceless. Uh-huh. So from Priceless, we was already like, we already knew everybody in the city. And then from there, we just started promoting my music. And then all the high schools, everybody started to catch on. Tyler started doing his thing. He dropped the Bastard album back mm. then. Okay, we, so then he was really cracking Odd by Future that point. Volume one around that same time. So you were still with Odd Future at that point, like, like really, Odd Future was more of just like a concept. It wasn't like, all right, mm. we're a rap group. It was like we was just all young. We was homies. He had the idea. We made music together, but it wasn't like a group yet. You uh-huh. get what I'm saying? It was more like we all homies. We all following the same dream. And ev- everybody that we associate with Odd Future was was around at this time. Had it fully formed? Yeah, mostly everybody, but not like like obviously like Frank Ocean wasn't around okay, yet. Yeah. Like everybody was around though. Like Haji B's, Damo Genesis. You know, everybody. Uh, Sid, Matt, the Internet. Uh-huh. Da- you know, it was it was dope. We had a whole collective, but like. Me and Tyler pretty much was starting out together like early on. Like we started making songs together, recording. He used to live like down the block. So we used to just link up, do songs together, uh-huh. and then um, just go about our business and stuff like that. Did you, when, when did you start to like realize that this was huge and that this was going way beyond, you know, anything that you would ever be able to normally expect like a kid in high school to be able to be a part of? Um, probably like around the time we dropped. I dropped uh, a few more tapes. I kept coming every year. Like tenth grade, I had another eight tape. tapes. Yeah, we got like eight underground, eight to ten underground. Oh, mixtapes. not eight of you, but like Odd Future had eight tapes. No, we. I had eight mixtapes. Okay. Through in high school, like from from ninth grade going all the way like twelfth grade, uh-huh. coming out of high school, I was like five, six, seven mixtapes in. So every year I would just keep coming with new tapes. But like um, around eleventh grade, I dropped. I had dropped the album called Sleeping in Class, and mm-hmm. then we really. We re, re, re-released it on Apple Music. I did this independently when I was like 17. Mm-hmm. We put Kendrick Lamar on one of the songs. Whoa. We put Mac Miller on one of the songs and um, a few bonus songs. And then that was like top five on on the um, Apple Music charts independently. Uh-huh. Um, and then from there, um, we got a call. When I, By the time I was in 12th grade, um, I was getting a call. We got a call from like Q-Tip and Jay-Z to go, um, to go meet Jay-Z in New York. Wow. So I got flown to um, to New York to meet with Jay Z when I was in twelfth grade. What was that like? That was crazy. <laughs> I went. Uh, that was it. Was it was amazing? Like just going out there. Uh, we went to the Mercer Hotel. He was working on Watch the Throne, oh, and wow. then he just like pretty much wanted to meet me. You know, he was hearing about the music and stuff, and we just chopped it up. And even that same year, Mac Miller brought me on tour on the West Coast run. Uh-huh. My my twelfth grade year was crazy. Like in high school, I, wow. Uh, so even, you were missing tons of school to d- go yeah. do all this epic ass shit. Yeah, I was missing school. You know, going on the road, coming back. Then by the, by the end of the year, I went to go meet with Jay, 
and then we end up doing a management deal with Rock Nation. So okay. I was I, be, I was managed by Rock Nation for five years. Uh huh. It was it was dope. It was a good business relationship. But I mean, being in twelfth grade, being on that level, what the fuck was it like to just all of a sudden have this much clout? Like it must have been insane. <laughs> yeah. Like the way, just knowing what LA is like, knowing how you know kids in LA high schools, yeah, they are jaded that they're 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 around more lit shit than most people or whatever. But to be a rap star in LA is like the ultimate fucking thing you could do as a young man more yeah. or less maybe be a basketball player yeah. or something is, is pretty up there too but i mean it must have just been insane to be like yeah, having, was, to still be in high school and still to be on that level okay, i was hooping the whole time i, oh, I didn't shit, quit okay. basketball like to 11th grade i played on uh, varsity really it was a good i had a good little season you could check <laughs> me out online you feel me i did my thing yeah you're multi-talented you that's did. amazing but like after that 12th grade i'm like you know i'm gonna I'm pursue the music 100 percent. Right. i couldn't I had a I had a certain like passion for the music. My pops wanted me to play basketball. He wanted me to stay with the sports. Mm. But I was like, I just I saw the vision for the music. I'm like, it's gonna work. Right. And I just kept I just stuck with it. You know. I mean, what I'm saying? did your dad understand that you had just had, had a meeting with Jay Z that that was a pretty big deal? Yeah, cause that cause think about it, the whole basketball thing was before that. Right. Okay. Jay Z yeah. meeting and all that came at the end of the school year. Okay. This after I dropped two more tapes, I dropped Customized Grady Volume Three. So I had a whole mixtape series, which was customized greatly. We did volume one, two, and three, uh. all in high school. And these was like classic mixtapes that people really, you know, go back and listen to from years ago. But those mixtapes kind of got my name out there. And then like I did an album, Sleeping in Class. That was like really start, people start catching on. And then by the time I um, did Life Changes, that was like the first year out of high school I did an album called Life Changes. And then that's when... It went like worldwide. I feel like the whole world took notice to what I was doing. Mm. Man, like when I think about the difference or like the the change that Odd Future sort of like personified, Odd Future and all the other shit that was coming out around it, like including you and there was a lot of other shit at the same time. ASAP Mob, Lil B, fucking White Girl Mob, all kinds of shit. But it felt like Odd Future in particular was sort of like associated with a lot of like crazy ass like humor and like a totally different like attitude than we had maybe seen in rap and that really stood out to a lot of people with yeah. but in tyler in particular just seemed like he was just so He's over the top cool. crazy cool, ass bro. jokes like he calmed down since then like, oh yeah he's totally. still wild, but I, I mean there's like... a reason he got banned from australia and shit people <laughs> always like... when i was in australia everybody wanted to talk about that yeah that was crazy yeah he got banned he got arrested a few <laughs> times like bro really going wild out here they're just, treating him like he shit. was a fucking clan member or some shit because he though. said something in a song i feel him though he's just letting letting loose out here in the world you know right just but letting that energy out was that the the vibe in your crew at that time that you guys were like the dudes who were making the foul ass jokes and all the wild <laughs> shit and all the ridiculous shit that like other I mean, other people wouldn't do i mean that's what our future i feel like was known for you know like great music and just a lot of great humor a lot of crazy shit then mm. I kind of was doing my own thing, like I had my own brand, Peas and Cares International. I was moving with my homies. We kind of was all working together, but that's kind of was like the disconnect where people thought like, why, why are you not in our future no more? Why are you still, you know what I'm saying? You kind of had your own thing going. Yeah, I just too. had my own little thing going. I went, you know, I, I went to school on the other side of town and certain stuff where we just, you know, we had our own lifestyles, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But other than that, we was brothers. Like we, we always support each other, do music together. It's like two brothers, like different walks of life, but we kind of like meet. Mm. Halfway, you know what I'm saying. Were you skating at the time a lot yeah, too? Yeah, I used to skate all through middle school. That was that was like the first thing I wanted to do was like be a skater. Because like, like that whole era of like you guys, Odd Future, all coming out of LA was like yeah. the first time that we saw like cool kids coming yeah. up who were rapping and also could yeah. like skate and were super familiar that like, with that like, culture. Like the ice cream skate team. And <laughs> yeah, I used to be on hype beats, like checking shit out. You know what I'm saying, like <laughs> back in middle day. school, just checking shit out, like on the internet, you know, being hip to what's going on, like Terry Kennedy, just all the skate shit that was going on. You know what I'm saying? You had never had somebody like TK coming yeah. out who was like this ill-ass skater yeah. who was basically a rapper. Yeah. You know, he was rapping and shit, but that he just seemed like a rapper. Was inspiring for a kid in the sixth grade, seventh grade. Like, bro, Kanye West was doing his thing. I was like, I was looking up to all the new wave shit, like the people that's being different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just standing up on some new shit in the generation, because back then it was all gangster music. Yeah, you know, like that was all rap could be yeah. to a certain extent. Like obviously you had tribe, you had yeah. like all kinds of stuff, but at, for, for a large part, you know, you weren't used to hearing anything coming out of LA yeah. that wasn't gangster rap. I think that's why people took a lot of notice to what I was doing, because mm. it was like, man, this kid from LA, but he not, like, he don't rap like just any artist 
coming out of LA, he got like a certain vibe. Because mm. when I came into music, when I got into music, I was listening to other type of music. I wasn't just listening to, you know what I'm saying, all gangster rap. I was listening to Tribe Called Quest and like MF Doom and mm. Mad Lib and you know all them type of type of acts. You know what I'm saying? And it was like Nas. I was listening to Illmatic when I was in like. 10th grade, mm. like I got into Illmatic, you know what I'm saying? I felt like that was a time period where it first started to really become cool in rap to have like a really diverse set of knowledge about yeah. all the shit that's going on, you know, yeah. all these different types of music. Yeah. Maybe nobody had ever really like made that seem like it was important or cool yeah. before that. Yeah. It was like a weird change yeah, in, in culture. Yeah, was a lot of shit going on. Yeah. yeah, rap was, you know, at a renaissance back like 20, in the 2000, 2010, and mm. you know, everybody had their way, but yeah, like. I think it's going back to you know all that real shit. Like everybody love the real music and yeah. they love that real instrumentation. And I love the trap shit too. I love 808s and you know all that shit. So this is about mixing it together. You feel like you were always destined to go in a different direction musically. Like you were always gonna uh, go against the the typical shit that was out in terms of like a lot of stuff now. It's like it don't even sound like hip hop yeah. unless it got 808s on yeah. it, right? Yeah, I think I always went against the grain. Like. I have my own way, my own sound. Mm. It's like it's like having that integrity of like, you know, what you, what you represent, what do you feel like you are as an artist? I feel like a lot of people come in the game and they hear what people are doing or they hear what's hot and they be like, "All right, I want to do something like that." Mm -hmm. But ever since I've been dropping these tapes, people be like, "Yo, your music, you got a certain sound that we want to hear from you." Mm. And I mean, I take a lot of pride in that cuz it's like I got a fan base for that that type of music that I that I created, that sound I created for myself. So mm. it's like a certain stature they hold me at. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to hear me doing too much of that other shit. They want to hear me like doing what they know I'm capable of. Yeah, that is that's like a the weird in, integral decision you yeah. have to make as an artist is how much you want to go along with the status yeah. quo versus just fully being yourself. But like I've been having fun though. I've been just, you know what I'm saying, like even when they heard me on Wiz Khalifa uh, Royal Highness mm -hmm. on the uh, higher than on that new tape he dropped, that Royal Highness song, I was on auto tune. Just switching up to, just trying new stuff with my voice. Like all my new music, I'm rapping, but I'm, I'm on hip hop beats. But I just tried to find like some new, you know what I'm saying? Where I'm like hitting them with all angles. How'd you end up on that? You still kick it with Wiz? Yeah, we, yeah, that's my boy. Like I'm, I'm part of Taylor Game basically. Oh really? <laughs> I mean, you know, I've been rocking with Wiz. You know, it, the, him and Snoop brought me on the High Road tour uh -huh. like a, a couple years ago, and um, yeah, he, I was on the intro on his last mixtape before the. Really? For his album drop. That's yeah. crazy. Have you thought about signing with him? I mean, you know, that's, that's the bro. You know, I definitely would, you know, but I, it's PNCIT. I definitely would rock with bro. You already know. Right. Yeah. What about, so is it tough to go without blunts when you're around Wiz? <laughs> no, nah, Wiz, he don't be tripping. I be telling him, like, bro, I'm on these backwoods, bro. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't really rock with the papers, like, too much. But, you know, when I'm with Wiz, I smoke a paper or two. But, right. I just, yeah. had, I just had Josh from Raw on yeah, here. You said, oh, from Raw. And he's like telling me how bad backwards are for me and shit. And I'm sitting there thinking like, fuck, he gave me I so mean, much raw shit. But I like Fronto Leaf. Oh, yeah, that's what Fronto. you're on now? Yeah, I've been, I've been rocking with those. They're a little more natural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't. I, I think he would disagree. I think he'd say it's all tobacco. It's all the same yeah, shit. It is. I think Fronto, <laughs> you know, a little more natural. Yeah. A little less chemicals. A little bit. I mean, I do. Sometimes I have friends who come around and they'll just smoke spliffs. And I, I sort of am like, damn, maybe I like this. Maybe I should switch over. I don't eat a splits. I was in Europe with Chris Brown. That's all they do. We were smoking splits in Amsterdam. Huh. Splits. It was cool. You were into it? Yeah, I rock with it. It's cool. Just because you couldn't get woods out there? There's nothing wrong with a split. It's like a, that's like, it feels like you're smoking a backwood. I like it, honestly. It gives you a weird ass head high, though. It'll put me fucking making me want to take a nap. That fucking tobacco smashing you in the face, especially because a lot of people in the UK were all like, they're 90% tobacco in that shit. You just can't put too much. Yeah. Tobacco, yeah, but they smoke it nonstop. That's why I think it's funny. I'm always making fun of my UK fans because I'm like, you guys swear your potheads and you're what smoking. You no, there ain't no weed in that shit. On your, on your head, what you got tied on your head? What do I got on this side? That shit crazy. I forget. I got Lisa Simpson on one side, and then I got it says the come up. You got and the I got knife a, right there. Yeah, yeah. it's that's a knife. That shit crazy. You know, Twenty one Savage. <laughs> you know, it's a knife. <laughs> that shit hard. I think he had it before me. He went for the forehead though, man. I would look crazy as shit with a forehead tattoo. <laughs> I might have to try one out. You don't. You got any tattoos? I I got tats like chest tats, and okay. shoulder. And I got one on my leg uh -huh. too. No, no, I gotta get some more shit though. You going for the face? 
Shit, neck. Probably get the neck. <laughs> neck. I should get one though, right here. Damn. Oh, yeah. No, fam. Wow, you should get. I don't your, know, man. You should get your whole face just all vegetables. I make I make enough money. You never know. <laughs> mm, you might fuck around. Make a big enough bag. Where's most of your money come from these days? Man, the music, man. Okay. I've never had a regular job in my life. Really? But I, but you know, I, res, I respect the grind and all that and the hustle. But I've never had to work for anyone in my life. It's uh-huh. been music. That's crazy. Peas and carrots international. What about uh? What about Epic? That was who um, you were with before, right? Uh, yeah, I was signed to Epic Records. Um, I was managed by Rock Nation. That that was dope. It was a dope, um, you know, dope journey uh-huh. through, the, through the industry, like learning the business and putting out my first album, Live and Grow. You know, which you know it, it was a pretty dope album. And I had my ups and downs with the like industry with the record label. I, I don't know. It was cool. It was a good experience. It was a good learning experience. But you ultimately came away from it like, nah, I'm I'm gonna I'm stay independent. I mean, I'm back like slightly independent. I got a partnership deal. I got deals on the table, but you know, I'm just working. Like I'm not in a rush for nothing. Like I'm more just building my company up right now, my infrastructure. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What do you think? <laughs> compare like being a, a rapper, like a new rapper right now, from what you could gather to like what it was like being a new dope rapper yeah. in 2011. Yeah. It's it's a lot has yeah, changed. The streaming now. world, uh, it's the game is different. It's like yeah. it's a lot more opportunities for like independent artists. Mm. That's what I'm seeing. Like. You know, it's a lot more respect, a lot more opportunity for you to go get it on your own than it is to, like, you know, go with the big company. Yeah. But if you go with the big company, that's cool. It's just, it's just they got to understand what you coming with. They got to understand you. And they got to be willing to build with you. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't just expect you to just make everything hot. And they just, you know what I'm saying? They got to at least be there to build with you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's weird because now there's a lot, it's a lot easier for you to get your stuff up on on uh, Apple Music and Spotify yeah. and to get, to get paid like that, to get shows without yeah. necessarily having a label and stuff. Like, man, sometimes we I end up in conversations with A&Rs about what the music game was like even like a few years ago. And yeah. they're, they're like, we were talking about Kodak the other day and they were like, bro, you didn't see any like street rapper come up without a cosign before Kodak. Yeah. And I was just like, and this is like really smart people telling yeah. me this. And I'm like thinking about it like, well, I wasn't thinking about the industry like that at yeah. that time. Because I was like, get yeah. A lot of artists get on, you know what I'm saying? Because it's signs. And like, but, but you I know. I've been telling people that. Like, Chief just, Keef. I'm, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different people actually that over like a, a period of time, like in those early 2010 type era where a lot of people were getting signed and like coming out in ways that we had never seen before, you know? Yeah. Oh, the game definitely been changing more and more. It's like it's big deals on the table yeah. if you believe in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like when I just dropped my album organic, like I didn't really I put a I put a rollout behind it, but it was an organic rollout. That's why I really caught the album that like everything I did for this album been natural. It's just direct to the fans. Like I didn't even realize how many people was waiting on the album for me. You know what I'm saying? But just the direct to the consumers and the straight Spotify releases, Apple Music, like everybody just getting it. The whole world is on Apple Music, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So it's just crazy how the new generation is able, you able to spread music faster. 2011 you know was saying? a crazy ass time because that was like CDs were over, yeah. but then the streaming world hadn't like fully developed yet. So it's like you were people were really listening to music on MySpace and on blogs and shit, and it just like. You know that like certain people I talked to, like I, I was interviewing fucking Ice Burgundy comes yeah. to mind, and he was mentioning he's like, yeah, like I came out, but when I was popping was when the labels weren't really throwing checks at people and shit because it was in between. It was when artists, even if you were popping, weren't really making any money. Yeah, now it's like artists know their worth. You got to know your worth. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's why the bags keep getting bigger for people who want to sign, even though it is just an advance and everything. Yeah. But like, there's so much more money for the labels to be making. At that time, 2011, the labels were, were scared. They didn't know what the fuck to do with these super, super internet friendly artists, you know? That's what I, I, um, a lot of people tell me. Like, I signed my deal right before the game switched. Switched up. That was one of the things that kind of, you know, messed me up too. Cause like I signed my deal and dropped my album right before, like, you know, in 2015, where everything was like changing over to streaming yeah. and stuff like that. But, you know, it was dope though. It was still a dope experience just to be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. 